Tyrannosaurus rex was one of the most ferocious predators to ever walk the earth. With a massive body, sharp teeth, and jaws so powerful they could crush a car, this famous carnivore dominated the forested river valleys in western North America during the late Cretaceous period, 68 million years ago. Fossils of T. rex are found in a variety of rock formations, dating to the late Campanian Maastrichtian ages of the late Cretaceous period, 72.7 to 66 million years ago. It was the last known member of the Tyrannosaurids and among the last non-avian dinosaurs to exist before the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Like other Tyrannosaurids, Tyrannosaurus was a bipedal carnivore with a massive skull balanced by a long, heavy tail. Relative to its large and powerful hind limbs, the forelimbs of Tyrannosaurus were short but unusually powerful for their size, and they had two clawed digits. The most complete specimen measures up to 12.3 to 12.4 meters, or 40 to 41 feet in length. But according to most modern estimates, Tyrannosaurus could have exceeded sizes of 13 meters or 43 feet in length, 3.7 to 4 meters or 12 to 13 feet in hip height, and 8.8 tons in mass. Although some other theropods might have rivaled or exceeded Tyrannosaurus in size, it is still among the largest known land predators with its estimated bite force of 35,000 to 57,000 newtons in the back teeth, being the largest among all terrestrial animals. By far the largest carnivore in its environment, Tyrannosaurus rex was most likely an apex predator, preying upon hadrosaurs, juvenile armored herbivores like ceratopsians and ankylosaurs, and possibly sauropods. The question of whether Tyrannosaurus was an apex predator or a pure scavenger was among the longest debates in paleontology. Most paleontologists today accept that Tyrannosaurus was both an active predator and a scavenger. Discovery Teeth from what is now documented as a Tyrannosaurus rex were found in 1874 by Arthur Lakes near Golden, Colorado. In the early 1890s, John Bell Hatcher collected postcranial elements in eastern Wyoming. The fossils were believed to be from the large species Ornithomius grandis, but are now considered T. rex remains. In 1892, Edward Drinker Cope found two vertebral fragments of a large dinosaur. Cope believed the fragments belonged to an agathomid ceratopsid dinosaur and named them Manospondylus gigas, meaning giant porous vertebra, in reference to the numerous openings for blood vessels he found in the bone. The Manospondylus gigas remains were, in 1907, identified by Hatcher as those of a theropod rather than a ceratopsid. Henry Fairfield Osborne recognized the similarity between Manospondylus gigas and T. rex as early as 1917 by which time the second vertebra had been lost. Owing to the fragmentary nature of the Manospondylus vertebrae, Osborne did not simonize the two genera, instead considering the older genus indeterminate. In June 2000, the Black Hills Institute found around 10% of a Tyrannosaurus skeleton at a site that might have been the original Manospondylus gigas locality. Barnum Brown, assistant curator of the American Museum of Natural History, found the first partial skeleton of T. rex in eastern Wyoming in 1900. Brown found another partial skeleton in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana in 1902, comprising approximately 34 fossilized bones. Henry Fairfield Osborne named the second skeleton T. rex in 1905. The generic name is derived from the Greek words tyrannos, meaning tyrant, and sauros, meaning lizard. Osborne used the Latin word rex, meaning king, for the specific name. T. rex arms The only thing not menacing about the king of the tyrant lizards was its tiny arms. T. rex wasn't the only dinosaur with small arms compared to the rest of its body, 
many of its theropod cousins, a group of bipedal, mostly meat-eating dinosaurs, shared this trait. But why did many theropods evolve such stubby arms? A 2021 study suggested that bone-crushing theropods such as T. rex evolved small arms, so they wouldn't bite each other's arms off when they fed. It is suggested that these dinosaurs devoured their prey as a pack, so perhaps they evolved the little arms to avoid accidental arm ripping as a throng of theropods descended on a tackled triceratops. John Hutchinson put another idea forward, proposing that as tyrannosaurs and their theropod cousins evolved larger heads and a bipedal posture, they used their forelimbs less. They started to use their heads more for catching and killing prey. As a result, the forelimbs didn't grow as much as the rest of their bodies did. The idea that the arms served as weapons when hunting prey have also been proposed by Stephen Stanley, who suggested that the arms were used for slashing prey, especially by using the claws to rapidly inflict long, deep gashes to its prey. However, Hutchinson insisted that T. rex's arms were too short to help it hunt and kill. These huge dinosaurs used a puncture-pull method of bringing down prey. So, does it mean that T. rex had useless arms? T. rex and other theropods may have used their arms for something, and it will take a lot more research. How fast was T. rex? Tyrannosaurus was a bulky and heavy carnivore, so it is unlikely to run very fast at all compared to other theropods like Carnotaurus or Gigantosaurus. But some studies have pushed for a fast-running T. rex hypothesis, claiming that the dinosaur may have been capable of speeds over 45 miles per hour. More recent research calculating the forces acting on a T. rex's limb bones has suggested a more moderate pace, around 24 to 40 kilometers an hour, or 15 to 25 miles per hour. Any kind of running faster would have broken this bipedal dinosaur's legs. A 2020 study indicates that Tyrannosaurus and other Tyrannosaurids were exceptionally efficient walkers. Among smaller to medium-sized species, such as Dromaeosaurids, longer legs appear to be an adaptation for faster running. But for theropods weighing over a thousand kilograms, or 2200 pounds, top running speed is limited by body size, so longer legs instead were found to have correlated with low energy walking. The results further indicate that smaller theropods evolved long legs as a means to both aid in hunting and escape from larger predators, while larger theropods that evolved long legs did so to reduce the energy costs and increase foraging efficiency. Even if it weren't a speedy guy, Tyrannosaurus and other Tyrannosaurids were more maneuverable than Allosauroids and other theropods of comparable size due to low rotational inertia compared to their body mass combined with the large leg muscles. As a result, it is hypothesized that Tyrannosaurus was capable of making relatively quick turns and could likely pivot its body more quickly when close to its prey. Brain and Senses Somewhat unusually among theropods, T. rex had a very long cochlea. The length of the cochlea is often related to hearing acuity, or at least the importance of hearing in behavior, implying that hearing was a particularly important sense to tyrannosaurs. Specifically, data suggests that T. rex heard best in the low frequency range, and the low frequency sounds were an important part of tyrannosaurus behavior. Tyrannosaurus had very large olfactory bulbs and olfactory nerves relative to their brain size, the organs responsible for a heightened sense of smell. This suggests that the sense of smell was highly developed and implies the Tyrannosaurus could detect carcasses by scent alone across great distances. The sense of smell in Tyrannosaurus may have been comparable to modern vultures, which use scent to track carcasses for scavenging. Research on the olfactory bulbs has shown that T. rex had the most highly developed sense of smell of 21 sampled non-avian dinosaur species. A 2017 study by Thomas Carr and colleagues found that the snout of Tyrannosaurids was highly sensitive, based on a high number of small openings in the facial bones of the related Daspletosaurus that contained sensory neurons. 
These studies speculated that tyrannosaurs might have used their sensitive snouts to measure the temperature of their nests and to gently pick up eggs and hatchlings, as seen in modern crocodilians. Another study published in 2021 further suggests that Tyrannosaurus had an acute sense of touch, based on neurovascular canals in the front of its jaws, which it could utilize to better detect and consume prey. However, a more recent study reviewing the evolution of the trigeminal canals among sauropsids notes that a much denser network of neurovascular canals in the snout and lower jaw is more commonly encountered in aquatic or semi-aquatic taxa. The neurovascular canals in Tyrannosaurus may instead have supported soft tissue structures for thermoregulation or social signaling. Feathered T-Rex According to the fossil record, birds and their feathers have been on Earth since the Jurassic period. Many paleontologists consider the oldest known bird to be Archaeopteryx lithographica, which lived about 150 million years ago. Whether Archaeopteryx could fly is up for debate, but the primitive bird definitely had feathers. You could see their impressions surrounding its fossilized bones. While it may seem logical that modern birds must have descended from their oldest known relative, there are some problems with this idea. A big one is that if you traveled 125 million years into the past, you may have seen lots of animals with feathers. They weren't birds though, they were dinosaurs. Since the late 1990s, paleontologists have found the fossils of numerous feathered dinosaurs, including species of Chordipteryx, Microraptor, and Dromaeosauridae. One is even a much smaller relative of Tyrannosaurus rex, known as Dilong Paradoxus. Many of these specimens come from fossil beds in Liaoning Province, China, where the proximity of lakes and active volcanoes made an ideal environment for preserving the impressions of feathers. Dinosaur feathers don't necessarily create lift. Some species may have developed downy feathers to provide extra insulation. This could explain why most of the feathered fossils discovered so far are from relatively small dinosaurs. A gigantic dinosaur like Aptosaurus wouldn't need the extra protection. The presence of quill knobs or bumps that connect feathers to bone in the forearms of Velociraptor also suggests that this notorious predator had feathers on at least part of its body. The idea that a T-Rex might have had feathers is contentious even among paleontologists. Euteranus, a 9 meter long relative of T-Rex, was found preserved with a coat of fuzzy feathers. So, does this mean T-Rex was also fluffy? Not so fast. Some scientists think that a full feather coat would leave the giant, warm-blooded T-Rex at risk of overheating. This thinking is supported by preserved patches of skin found from many parts of the body that appear to be scaled. Although we don't know for certain either way, the real T-Rex was probably something between fully scaly and fully fuzzy. Feeding Strategies Most paleontologists accept that Tyrannosaurus was both an active predator and a scavenger, like most large carnivores. By far the largest carnivore in its environment, T-Rex was most likely an apex predator, preying upon hadrosaurs, armored herbivores like ceratopsians and ankylosaurs, and possibly sauropods. A study in 2012 by Carl Bates and Peter Falkingham found that Tyrannosaurus had the most powerful bite of any terrestrial animal that has ever lived. Finding an adult Tyrannosaurus could have exerted 35,000 to 57,000 thousand newtons of force in the back teeth. This allowed it to crush bones during repetitive biting and fully consume the carcasses of large dinosaurs. Stephen Lautenschlager and colleagues calculated that Tyrannosaurus was capable of a maximum jaw gape of around 80 degrees, a necessary adaption for a wide range of jaw angles to power the creature's strong bite. The eye sockets of Tyrannosaurs are positioned so that the eyes would point forward, giving them binocular vision slightly better than that of modern hawks. It is not obvious why natural selection would have favored this long-term trend if tyrannosaurs had been pure scavengers. 
which would not have needed the advanced depth perception that stereoscopic vision provides. In modern animals, binocular vision is mainly found in predators. Tyrannosaurus and most other theropods probably primarily processed carcasses with the lateral shakes of the head like crocodilians. Evidence also strongly suggests that tyrannosaurs were at least occasionally cannibalistic. Tyrannosaurus itself has strong evidence pointing towards it having been cannibalistic in at least a scavenging capacity based on tooth marks on the foot bones, humerus, and metatarsals of one specimen. Fossils from the Fruitland Formation, Curdland Formation, and the Maastrichtian Age Ojo Alamo Formation suggest that cannibalism was present in various Tyrannosaurid genera of the San Juan Basin. The evidence gathered from these specimens suggests opportunistic feeding behavior in Tyrannosaurids that cannibalized members of their own species. Tyrannosaurus macrinus was even bigger apex predator. Paleontologists have uncovered a never-before-seen Tyrannosaur species in North America that has been masquerading as a Tyrannosaurus rex for decades. The newly identified species is the closest known relative of T. rex and could have been even larger than the dinosaur king. The newfound sister species, Tyrannosaurus macrianus, was identified from a partial fossilized skull that paleontologists unearthed in 1983 while exploring the Hall Lake Formation in New Mexico. In a new study published in the journal Scientific Reports, paleontologists have revealed that the skull dates to between 73 million and 71 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. This makes Tyrannosaurus macrianus between 3 million and 5 million years older than T. rex. The most striking difference is the shape of the lower jaw, which is more slender and curved than T. rex. It also has fewer teeth than most other Tyrannosaurs, which is one of the main reasons why the researchers believe it is T. rex's closest relative. The size of the skull suggests this particular Tyrannosaurus macrianus was around the same size as a typical adult T. rex, which grew to around 39 feet or 12 meters long, around the same size as a double-decker bus. But other individuals of the same species may have been even larger. Footprints Two isolated fossilized footprints have been tentatively assigned to T. rex. The first was discovered at Filmont Scout Ranch, New Mexico, in 1983 by American geologist Charles Pilmore. Originally thought to belong to a hadrosaurid, examination of the footprint revealed a large heel unknown in ornithopod dinosaur tracks and traces of what may have been a hallux the dewclaw-like fourth digit on the Tyrannosaur foot. The track was made in what was once a vegetated wetland mudflat. It measures 83 centimeters or 33 inches long by 71 centimeters or 28 inches wide. The second footprint that may have been made by a Tyrannosaurus was first reported in 2007 by British paleontologist Phil Manning from the Hell Creek Formation of Montana. The second track measures 72 centimeters or 28 inches long, shorter than the first track. A set of footprints in Glen Rock, Wyoming date to the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous and hailing from the Lance Formation were described by Scott Persons, Phil Curry, and colleagues in 2016, and are believed to belong to either a juvenile T. rex or the dubious Tyrannosaurid Nanotyrannus lancensis. From measurements and based on the positions of the footprint, the animal was believed to be traveling at a walking speed of around 2.8 to 5 miles per hour. Classification Tyrannosaurus are generally divided into the large but more lightly built and slightly earlier Albertosaurines and the still larger, more robust and later Tyrannosaurines. Most Tyrannosaurs are known from the end of the Cretaceous, but some basal forms are now known from the early Cretaceous and even the late Jurassic, though these earlier forms share few features with their later, well-known relatives. 
Guanlong, an animal about 3 meters long from the late Jurassic of Xinjiang province, western China, is the easiest well-known member of the group. It has some primitive and unique features, the most notable being a complex skull crest consisting of a hollow bone running atop the midline of its skull. Dai Long, an early tyrannosaur 1.5 meters or 5 feet long from the spectacular Liaoning deposits of northeastern China, is preserved with a covering of simple filamentous proto-feathers like those seen on many other early Cretaceous theropod dinosaurs. Aotoranus, from early Cretaceous deposits on Britain's Isle of Wight, is also lightly built and relatively small, some 4.5 meters or 15 feet long. These three tyrannosaurs are so primitive that they retain three fingers on their hands. Several small tyrannosaur fossils from the end of the Cretaceous of western North America were once assigned to separate taxa, but most scholars now consider them to be merely young tyrannosaurs. For example, specimens once given the names Nanotyrannus and Stygivenator are now considered to be juvenile tyrannosaurs, and the former Dinotyrannus is now seen as a subadult T Rex. Since 1902, paleontologists have recognized the T Rex as the only formal member of the genus Tyrannosaurus. This classification remained largely unchallenged until 2022 when some paleontologists suggested on the basis of variation in femurs and teeth among T. rex that it should be separated into three species, Tyrannosaurus rex, Tyrannosaurus imperator, and Tyrannosaurus regina. However, this division is controversial. Tyrannosaurs were long thought to be one of the carnosaurs, flesh-eating lizards, related to other large theropods, such as allosaurs. These resemblances have proven to be superficial, related to large size alone. Today, tyrannosaurs are considered gigantic members of the Cholerosaurs, hollow-tailed lizards, a group largely composed of smaller, more slender forms. Frequently, they have been related to the largely toothless, ostrich-like ornithomimids, mainly because tyrannosaurs and ornithomimids share a peculiar foot with pinched foot bones. However, some paleontologists suggest that tyrannosaurs could be related to the dromaeosaurs, the raptors of Jurassic Park. Life History The smallest known individual is estimated to have weighed only 30 kilograms or 66 pounds, while the largest adult most likely weighed about 5,000. 650 kilograms, or 12,460 pounds. Juveniles remained under 1,800 kilograms, or 4,000 pounds, until approximately 14 years of age, when body size began to increase dramatically. During this rapid growth phase, a young T. rex would gain an average of 600 kilograms, or 1,300 pounds a year, for the next four years. At 18 years of age, the growth slowed dramatically. During their growth, from juvenile to adult, Tyrannosaurus was capable of slowing down its growth to counter environmental factors, such as lack of food. In changing environments, Tyrannosaurus was particularly well-suited to an environment that shifted yearly in regards to resource abundance, hinting that other mid-sized predators might have had difficulty surviving in such harsh conditions and explaining the niche partitioning between juvenile and adult Tyrannosaurs. Over half of the known T. rex specimens appear to have died within six years of reaching sexual maturity, a pattern which is also seen in other tyrannosaurs and in some large, long-lived birds and mammals today. These species are characterized by high infant mortality rates, followed by relatively low mortality among juveniles. Mortality increases again following sexual maturity, partially due to the stresses of reproduction. Gregory Scott Paul also writes that Tyrannosaurus reproduced quickly and died young, but attributes their short lifespans to the dangerous lives they lived. 